big ticket items like cars and properties have traditionally been financed by loans. Increasingly though, smaller items like e-commerce purchases can also be financed by loans now offered by the e-commerce platforms themselves. E-commerce platforms are just one of the many outside of the banking realm who now offer consumer loans. And these companies have continued to offer such loans to their customers despite the uncertainties from COVID-19. The motivation for them to do this is to drive uh, growth in their core business. But quite often, this additional uh, financing business is also a source of revenue, source of profits for them because they act like uh, a bank. Okay? Uh, they lend and, and they're able to charge an interest. Generally, it is more of a complementary business and rather, than a uh, or rather than a horizontal kind of um, integration. So when you have a main uh, core business and that is centred around building um, payments, then you have a financing arm that can help to service your clients and provide a more like a one-stop shop for your entire core business. One example of such integration is Toyota Financial Services. It recently started operations in Singapore. So globally, our average finance penetration is around about 35. So it means out of 100 cars which are sold, 35 are financed or leased via Toyota Financial Services. In Singapore, because of the high pricing of cars, more or less 90% of all customers are financing or leasing their cars here in Singapore. Financing arms have also contributed to profits. Around about half of the entire balance sheet is represented by Toyota Financial Services, which shows you the importance of financial services companies within the overall automotive industry. Uh, in that sense, I would say um, financial services supports the overall, managing the overall cycles in the business. Established companies like those in the automobile industry loan out money mainly from their profit pool. Others, however, may be doing so via borrowed cash. This is especially among tech startups across the globe. In Singapore, Grab recently launched a consumer loan platform despite not turning a profit yet. If you're a tech company today, you can borrow money very easily. Everyone wants to lend to tech companies because they are the growth sector. So the tech companies can take that access to the capital markets and turn it around and lend it on to their customers who probably find it much more difficult to raise money in the markets. Even before the outbreak of COVID-19, loans from these banking outsiders were gaining traction, especially among smaller businesses and individuals. In the United States, companies like PayPal, Square and Amazon are becoming go-to options for small businesses looking for loans. And some of these companies' loan portfolios grew as much as 30% year on year. This is even though rates tend to be higher or around 18% annualized, according to the experts that we spoke to. From a customer's perspective, I think uh, uh, they look at it simply as um, how difficult it is to get the, get the financing, right? If it's much harder, like going to a formal process, going to a bank, uh, the chances of them trying to do that is, uh, is uh, uh, less likely, right? Uh, because you have to provide a lot of information, your credit history, your, your profile and so on. Whereas for consumer finance, very often, the review process is, is really very painless, right? The other issue is uh, the cost. As long as it's an easy process, the cost is acceptable to me, I really wouldn't mind where it comes from. And despite the uncertainties from the COVID-19 pandemic, these companies haven't shied away from lending. In China, e-commerce firm Alibaba offered 70 billion B in interest-free loans for street vendors, while JD.com launched a Spark plan, providing up to 100,000 B of interest-free credit per merchant. 
then the industrial companies have said, well, I've got a customer here, we want to get business done, we are prepared to step in and support this customer. Whereas the bank will say, I need to redirect my capital somewhere else, and therefore I can no longer consistently offer this capital to an existing customer. So I think it's just a different attitude towards risk. Industrial companies tend to take the longer term view. Access to their customers' data has also helped manage credit risks. They know their clients, they do business with their clients for, for a while now, so they understand the clients. They do not have to do as much customer due diligence, for example, as compared to a bank. And so they will target these uh, clients and see what they can do to help them uh, in, for any financing uh, needs that they have. Ahead, experts expect growth in consumer finance loans, regardless of who the lenders are. And that could provide a much needed boost to pandemic hit economies. With the ability for you to finance it, to pay over a certain period of time in small, bite-sized amounts, um, and with uh, absolute interest that uh, uh, is manageable, uh, you would be spending more in, uh, in scenarios that you wouldn't, you would hold back from spending, right? So, I would say the general environment is aligned to bringing back consumer sentiment and um, consumer finance is an enabler. The world is seeing a massive reshaping of traditional banking. I think that we're going to see a much greater diversity of people investing in this sector. Today it's companies providing loans, but it could even be the peer-to-peer -peer platforms establishing themselves and growing in the future. So banking will change, and we may not be calling it banking in the future, future but broad financing.